Hey everybody, it's Hussein Kabani, your favorite broker, and today I'm sitting here with Varun with iConnect Mortgages. Uh, the reason we're doing this quick video here for you guys is that uh, it's March 4th, 2020, and the Bank of Canada has just dropped the mortgage rates by uh, 50 basis points. 50 basis points. Yeah, exactly. Drop. So we kind of wanted to go over this a little bit because it is a little bit of a surprising announcement. And also, we were planning on doing something about the qualifying rates coming down a little bit. So we want to kind of cover both of these with you guys very quickly, just some quick facts. <laughs> How do you see this kind of affecting people with their mortgages? I think it's a mindset more than anything else. Yeah. Uh, even the quad, we talked about the qualifying rate has been dropped as well by almost 35 basis points. Right. Uh, it's actually increasing the buying power only by 1.8 percent, so which one, is not significant. Yeah. So if we if we put that into context, on somebody buying like a six hundred thousand dollar property, we're looking at about twelve thousand dollars increase Extra. in buying power. Exactly. Yeah. So if you guys were going to qualify or buy something for about six hundred thousand dollars, well, your budget's gone all the way up to six hundred twelve thousand dollars now. So it's not really going to get you far. But keep in mind, with the rate drop, yeah, uh, it's going to increase the pricing uh, price of the houses as well. Exactly. So that twelve thousand dollars you can buy extra, yeah, maybe disappear now. Yeah, and it probably will go higher than that because yeah. we were kind of in a situation now with the inventory already at the beginning of two thousand twenty, where we are sitting at a lower inventory position right now, and everything is kind of going into multiple offers. For the most part, things are going into multiple offers. And just a quick quick number I wanted to share with you guys. So if we looked at February two thousand and nineteen versus uh, this year in twenty twenty, the number of sales actually have gone up by forty five percent. So in two thousand and nineteen, in February. February, throughout the Toronto Real Estate Board, we saw about almost 5,000 sales. And right now we've seen just about 7,250 sales happen in February already. That also came with an average price increase of about 17%. So the average price last year in February was about $780,000. And right now we're looking about $910,000. So with this rate uh, drop and the qualifying right. decreasing basically, yep. uh, and where we're sitting with the inventory position, it's probably not gonna do anything for you guys at all. I think uh, as Vern said is that uh, what this is gonna do is cause more of a stir in the marketplace and things will probably go for even more over asking than they were before. So any kind of benefit that you would have saw from this uh, probably is gonna be wiped away right now just because of hype right. in the marketplace. Yeah. So that's kind of in a nutshell of what's going on over here, but uh, it kind of leads us into a little bit of like, why is this kind of happening right now as well, right? It's very interesting. Yeah. Right? It's a 50 basis point cut that's significant. Yeah. And, and, and something else that we were kind of reading up on is, is that, uh, so the U we're obviously following the US's US. moves right now. So what ended up happening was, is that the US was going to be meet March 18th. 18th. Yeah. So March 18th. And then they actually just met today or yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. They exactly. caught it yesterday. Exactly. And so they have never preemptively cut the rate before a meeting since 2008. So that kind of gets our, our mind turning a little bit and because we all kind of know how, what happened in 2008, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, 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 like, we're just thinking, like, okay, would they preemptively cut the rate? A lot of this has to do with uh, coronavirus. Coronavirus, right? Mm -hmm. So much of this, we're kind of like thinking about it and saying, like, we're not sure how much of this actually has to do with the coronavirus versus uh, maybe something that was going to happen anyways, right? Yeah, I've been talking to a couple of people in this business. It could be a recession or something like the government is seeing it. Yeah. And the coronavirus is definitely a biggest factor for the rate cut. Yeah. Uh, the supply demand and a lot of things going on. The global economy is tumbling. Right. But it's a, it's a lot, lot to think about it. Yeah. A lot to think about it. Yeah. And, and so the other thing that we were kind of talking about with one of your contacts is, is that, okay, so overall, if we do have a kind of a recession, like uh, where is this going to kind of affect us, right? Overall, we were we were basically saying like in the three major cities in Canada, we don't really see housing being affected that much. Not to say go out and spend as much as you want because you're going to be protected, but we don't really see housing being affected that much. You know, our belief is is that housing prices have been rapidly increasing due to immigration. I think the number was somewhere around like we were getting 200,000 people through the doors like, on true. an annual basis. That is true. Yeah, and about 85% of these people were settling in the three major, major kind of cities. Yeah. yeah. And and it's not just like, you know, we're getting refugees here and whatnot. There is some of that happening as well. But most of the time, these people are coming in with, uh, you know, a lot of money. They're professionals and they are able to enter the housing market. So this is where we're kind of seeing a spike happening in the housing market. 
the one thing that we were kind of saying is, is that because of this coronavirus and, and the two places that the immigration is actually happening a lot from is the Middle East and, and, China. Uh, and, and yeah, Asia and, and China, yep. right? So, so because of that, like we might see a little bit of a slowdown sure. from uh, immigration happening in just because, you know, the Canadian government is going to be protecting uh, the citizens over here. So we might see a little bit of a, a slowdown in the immigration rate. But overall, I think that in the economy, we're probably not going to see too much happen in the housing market to a negative effect. This kind of leads me to kind of say is like I always have a personal opinion of what's kind of going on and so I think what we're going to see happen right now is is the government is trying to stimulate the economy so by them stimulating the economy it's not just like mortgage rates that are going to kind of come down but overall lending is going to probably come down so money is going to become cheaper, cheaper to get much cheaper, yeah. so my advice to people is is that hey let's not get into consumer debt because of what is going to happen over here and and you know that that car that you've been looking at just because it's come down a hundred bucks in monthly payments or something like that you know I don't think this is something that we should be getting involved with I think borrow the money if you're in a position to borrow the money borrow the money but invest it into assets invest it into real estate one thing that kind of stuck out to me is is that invest it into real estate but you know still within control like doesn't mean that you should go out and buy this big house that you really don't have any use for because the payments are going to be just a little bit higher or whatnot and it reminds me of a point from rich dad poor dad where they kind of like tell you what an asset and a liability is for the most part, your personal residence is gonna be a liability, it's not an asset. Overall, it is an asset, but on a monthly basis, it's costing you money to actually carry this property forward. You got property tax, you got interest, you still have your mortgage payment. There are utility costs, there are other things that actually go along with this. So yeah, overall, it is an asset, but I wouldn't consider an asset on your balance sheet right now. What I would consider an asset is, is that if you have an investment property, so if, you're, if you've invested into a property where you're getting some positive cash flow into it, I think that's great to borrow money for. But overall, I don't think it's a good idea for us to just kind of say, hey, cheap money, let's, let's go out and spend all this money right now. Because overall, what's gonna go up comes down and what comes down comes back up. So uh, you don't wanna get stuck in a situation where you're, you're seeing the, the positive side of borrowing the money right now, but overall, you know, the economy is gonna improve overall. So yeah, you don't wanna get stuck at the end of the day. What do you think about all this? I think overall, the housing market is heating up. Yeah. So demand is going extremely high and supply is low. So that's mean I can see a lot of people are going bidding wars and yeah. a lot of things happening. And it's gonna to continue to fuel because of what we're seeing. Exactly. Yeah. And and I think it's gonna be worse in the next couple of days, a couple of weeks yeah. until the inventory climbs up. Uh, I, the piece of advice if you are a buyer, if you're looking if you're in the market right now, please do your due diligence. Make sure you start getting a pre approval done and make sure the appraisal is done. You are not you may overpay it, but the bank may not support the value. So you have yeah. to be very mindful of what you do. Uh, I like to explain to my clients in this way, and correct me if I'm wrong. I, I feel like the mortgage approval actually has two pieces of it. The first piece of it is is that the client has to be approved. So they're going to look at all of the client's uh, criteria, income, the income, income credit. Yeah, it, so they're gonna look at your down payment and all this other stuff. And then, so once you get pre-approved, and say for example, you're pre-approved for $700,000, and you see a property listed for five ninety nine, dollars and you get into a crazy bidding war, and you end up at you know six ninety five, dollars and you're like, well, I'm still $5,000 below yeah. where I'm supposed to be at. Great but guess point. what? <laughs> guess what? What's gonna happen? The thing is, is that the second part of this approval is? Appraisal. Appraisal, yeah. So the thing is, is that just because you're qualified up to seven hundred, you spend six ninety five. dollars the bank can easily come back and say, hey, we think the property is only worth 650. 650. So what and happens then? So they're gonna lend 80% or 95% based on what the appraisal rate is. Exactly, and then what happens in these you situations? You need to come up with a difference. Yeah. So if you're a first time home buyer, you need to have the extra cash. And so, so this leads me to also telling you guys, we have to be very careful when we're writing these offers, okay? So uh, an offer has a couple of components to it. Obviously price is gonna be one of them and conditions is gonna be the other. People tend to go without conditions in an offer, but you have to be very, very, very confident that you're gonna be able to get this mortgage approval. And you have to have extra money saved up on the side in case the appraisal doesn't come in, I'm so sure. you can cover that gap. Because if you go in firm, you're gonna have a legal liability to purchase that property. And if for some reason you can't, you're gonna end up probably getting sued. We've seen that in 2017. And we've seen a lot of that happen. Yeah. People losing deposits. I've heard of someone losing a deposit up to $200,000. Yeah. And I mean, you gotta walk away from that money. And that's a pretty tough pill to swallow. So my advice, uh, just be careful. Make sure you guys do your due diligence. Make sure the comps are in place and, yeah. and then write the offer. So Vern, I use him for all of my personal mortgage needs and stuff like that. I refer a lot of my clients to him. He's got a wealth of information. Uh, I suggest that if you guys have any questions regarding the mortgage and what the change 
changes are, please contact him. You guys can reach out to me and I'll definitely put you guys in touch with him. Until the next time, I need you guys to remember one thing. Get Cabani, get sold. Sell it, 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 sell it,